Now let's talk about number formats and it is going to be very similar to the date time format. So a number format can be a currency, a decimal number or a percentage or other things. So different styles for a number. And to provide these number formats, we have a numbers format property in our create i18 method. So again, we are adding a new property or option to our method. We have our translations, date time format, and now it's time for number formats. And we are going to repeat the same process as date time format in our translation documents. So after the date time formats, I'm going to create a number formats and set this to an object. Then I will copy these examples from the documentation, paste it here for English. Then I will copy this, paste it for Spanish. And I would like to change the currency to EUR or Euro. And I will add another property, use grouping, and I will set this to false. And we will see the effect of this later. And let's change the minimum fraction to three and maximum to, for example, eight, just to have some different values in different translations. Then I can copy this and paste it for Japanese too. And I will get the example from the documentation again. I can copy this and paste it here. So the currency is different, the use grouping is set to true, and some different properties and values in each translation. Now in our main.js, we just want to import these. Again, we can copy these three lines and paste it here and just change this object to number formats. And that's it for defining these formats. Now, in order to show them in our component, we have another method. We used T for translation, D for date, and now we have N for number. So again, I'm extracting that from use i18n plugin. So this n method, similar to d method, is looking for a number as its first argument. Let's say 2500. And as the second argument, it is looking for the format of these numbers, or basically what is this number based on the formats or the styles we defined in our translations. Is it a currency or a decimal number or a percentage? For example, I will set this to currency. Now back to our website, we can see the number in US dollars. We can see the comma that is coming from use grouping, which by default is true and two decimals and the decimal point is a dot. If we change this to Spanish, you notice we don't have grouping because we set it to false in the Spanish right here. And the notation is a comma. And of course we see the symbol after the text. So these are just the standard ways to show currency in different languages. And in Japanese, we see it like this. Now let's explore and see what other things we can use with this n method. Similar to the date function, we can also set the locale of this statement to be fixed and not change based on the global locale. So for example, if I set this to Japanese as the third argument, then it will always stay Japanese. Doesn't matter which language I'm selecting here. We can also have a fourth argument, which is going to be the options. So in each translations, we have these options, right? For the currency, for example, and we can change these or add more to it in line as the fourth argument to this N method. For instance, in Japanese, we are setting use grouping and it is true. So if I just copy this and paste it here and set this to false, you can see that it is not grouped. So we can override those options or we can add new ones to it using the object as the fourth argument in this N method. Now let's have other examples. So I'm going to delete this part and set the format to decimal for this one and add more number with a dot. So we have a decimal number and the format is decimal. Back to our website. You notice in Japanese, we have the grouping and we can only see one decimal number. If we switch to Spanish, we can see five decimal numbers because we have only five numbers here and we set the maximum fraction digits to eight. So we are seeing all of them. In English, we have two for minimum and maximum. So if we switch to English, we can only see two. And same thing for the percentage number. So we can set the format to percent and let's set this to, for example, 0.85. So 85% back to our website. We can see 85% for English. Spanish is shown like this than in Japanese. Now, if we add more numbers here and then provide the options and let's set the minimum fraction digits to, for example, three, then we can see three digits after the 85% in all these languages. 
And that is how we can define our number formats and show them on the screen using the end method. So it is quite simple and similar to date time formats. We just have to find the right format from MDN documentation or other sources and provide it in our translations. And so far we covered the essential parts of this plugin. And I would say in most use cases, these are the options you would need. So messages or translations, date time formats and number formats. Now in the next video, we just want to cover some other features of this plugin. For example, the custom components we have and the fallback locales and some other features that we can cover.